And it must be said that in the court, we know of judges who give you time. They don't really give you a date to come to court. They give you a time. If they say, I'm going to hear you at nine, they will hear you at nine. If you are there after nine, you've lost it. Um, and a host of other things. So I suppose I am saying that I believe that what should be engaging our attention should not be about calling a senior or a junior, but how I could get my case started, dispensed with in a very short time. So that even if I'm doing a land matter, I can, I can do it within six months. You are done. You know, that I can pick a phone and argue my ex parte application without going to court we and wasting for that money. Day. We are right. waiting for that day. Okay, thank you. Thank you so very much. Now, um, let's go to the issue that, you know, is uh, raising a lot of eyebrows. Now, let's begin with you, uh, Kuku. That it's unheard of to have had the court injunct the MP. Not at all. Not in my view. Indeed, and in fact, my starting point is, if you weigh both sides, I'm talking about the seven judges, if you synthesize everything that they said, the minority, all that they said was that the same relief that was being sought in the Supreme Court had already crystallized, but they needed to have used a different path to achieve what they wanted in the Supreme Court. So therefore, between the two sides, they all agree that once the high court had concluded that the MP had lost it and that he was not entitled to have contested in the very first place, he ought to be thrown out of parliament. The only difference between them is that the majority decided that by reason of the rate that had been put before the Supreme Court, they could rely on it as a basis for granting the interim injunction that they have sought, which interim injunction indeed has the effect of permanently injuncting him. But that is no strange to the law. That is no new to the law. There is authority for the proposition that in an application for an interim injunction, if it, the, the, the facts merit it, the court could grant a final injunction. In other words, a permanent injunction. This is not the first time. So I see this, when people say travesties of justice, I don't understand it. And that's my view of the matter. Mm. Just a major chair, Justice Doji. Doji. They said, oh, no, it's, it's procedure. Doji, not Doji. Doji, Doji. Yeah. Agnes Doji. Yeah. Her leadership justice, Agnes Doji. Doji. Mm. Their case simply is that it's about procedure. But even then, I disagree with them. Because there is also authority for the proposition that, notwithstanding the fact that you've got a judgment, which is a final one, if the means of enforcing it is closed or frustrated, you could bring a fresh action to enforce. There is authority for the proposition under the common law of bringing a fresh action to enforce a judgment, a valid judgment of a court. Except that this is my first time of this fresh action being brought in the Supreme Court. I think that's the question. That the first so. action you're talking about, should it be in the Supreme Court? That is so. That is so. So, the, the, so it's about, it's about them. I mean, the, the, that application itself, insofar as it turned upon an interpretation of the Constitution, obviously, under our laws, that's the only forum. That is to say, the Supreme Court where you can call upon the Supreme Court to interpret, in this case, I think it's Article 94.2 of the Constitution. So therefore, even though it is addressed as a constitutional question for the Supreme Court to interpret that section, we have no doubt, I have no doubt in my mind, that that same matter had more or less been ruled upon by the High Court. Call it ingenuity, call it whatever name, but a rose smells as good by whatever name you call it. So as long as that matter is the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has already determined, and we can tell by reason of the position that the majority are taking, that they would also uphold 
the main issue that is before the court. Mm. I can also state that by reason of the reasoning the minority have given, they will also rule against that writ that has been issued in the Supreme Court as incompetent. So at the end of the day, the matter has been resolved for all of us. There's no travesty of justice insofar as the High Court ruling remains unchallenged. There's no travesty of justice insofar as the Court of Appeal, the matter has been struck. The, the minority's view is that if you have procured a judgment in the High Court, yes. that nullifies his election that is so. and orders a rerun. And in fact, there was an injunction in Terim, and there was also a perpetual injunction on the back of that judgment. That is so. What you do is to enforce that judgment. The place to enforce that judgment is in the High Court, not in the Supreme Court. That is so. If you say, as they argued, that he had breached and violated the judgment and not complied, if that is your view, then your recourse is to go back to the High Court and cite him for contempt. You didn't do all of that. So, Nene Amegache concludes that, or makes the point that the, let me read him, he says that, he says that, um, a breach of the order of injunction issued by the High Court should have been enforced by the High Court or the Court of Appeal. Then he proceeds to say that, um, the Supreme Court is not the forum to employ legal ingenuity by the filing of a constitutional action and then disguise this application <coughs> as an offshoot of the writ, while in substance an enforcement of the High Court orders, which is not an appeal before us. I quite get that, that argument. But essentially, we say fundamental problems require fundamental solutions. We live in a country, you've noticed the difficulty even of service in all this legal drama that has rolled or unfolded before our eyes. And therefore, it's about the practicality of enforcing the judgment of the high court through a contempt application and their fallout and so forth and so on. I'm not thinking that in every situation that we find ourselves, in, in an attempt to enforce, because I've already made a point that a judgment of a court on the common law can be enforced by a fresh action. And I repeat that for that reason, insofar as this has been couched as a constitutional issue, it is the Supreme Court that is the proper forum where this matter can then go to. As to whether the Supreme Court will come to a conclusion that by reason of its repetition, in other words, what the Supreme Court has done is nothing really different from what the High Court has already determined. And indeed, and in fact, by grant of the injunction, that injunction, even a permanent one, has already been given by the High Court. Mm. So indeed, and in fact, in my honest view, it's a repetition.